And welcome back to Kingdom Death Settlement Phase. We just finished beating the uh, Crimson Crocodile for the first time. Only lost one. Uh, happy that uh, happy that you're joining us. We've got a great crew uh, chatting with us over on uh, Twitch. We'd love to see more of you in the future. Uh, somebody even gifted a uh, bunch of subs to people. So wow. That's kind of awesome. So uh, that <laughs> we've got seven subscribers. Nice. It's a thing. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. We've uh, as Squirrel Monkey was just saying that you might have seen pop up. Uh, we've been remembering how to play the game, so it'd be, it took us two and a half hours to do the uh, the prologue fight. But it's a thing. We're and getting it's faster towards the end. <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to take a little while to uh, do this. Uh, we got some great resources. We got a blood diamond here, a groomed nail. We got a skull, two monster bones. A something, a little juice, that goes well with our pseudo penis, a blood stool, a crimson bone, and a flat vein that you can apparently whistle a lot into. Um, so these are things. <laughs> uh, but now we're getting started with our settlement phase. So what do we do in our settlement phase? All right, returning survivors. We've got three of them. Yeah. Do we want to actually quickly like put our exchange, transfer our values from this to the returning side? Do that quick. So Craps has three insanity. Where did that go? Five ah. insanity. Uh, one survival still. Um, I don't have to mark the damage, do I? No. Okay. The damage is not retained. Thankfully. Um, and then Baccarat still has a survival, two insanity. That's boring. And nothing else there. Okay. All right. So then, there we go. All right. So we've placed the settlement board, the returning survivors, we have the record sheet. All right. Uh, we need the first Crimson Day uh, settlement event. Okay. Here we go. First Crimson Day. Gorgeous art as always. And the survivors trust their kill, putting their back to the bloodbath. They set off, grimly dragging the squelching hulk uh, into the darkness. Drawn by a soft glow, they approach a distant form. On a deep, instinctual level, they know this place is safe, and they make it their home. Roll a 1d10. Go for it! Roll high! Roll high! I don't want to name people. Five. Not bad. You got us the second tier. We get... Uh, nine unnamed survivors. So, people, we need names. Start giving us some names. Uh, the theme is anything gambling related. So, our starting population is 12. Correct. It is Betty gambling related. Oh, nope. Yeah, we need gambling related names for this. We're, we're, we're sticking with the theme. <laughs> Hence, Baccarat, Craps, uh, Pachinko, and what was your other one that died? Blackjack. Blackjack. <laughs> Those chips. Chips? Yep. Poker. They obviously want him to be the spear user. <laughs> Good call. Snake eyes. Male. So we we'll keep that. taking names. Bingo. Bingo. Play at eight. Four more. Moves. Yep. Uh, coming. We'll keep track and we'll keep going with the settlement and write some. The first settlement event will not. Okay. All right. So. That actually. Term. What? Let's go. Mm -hmm. uh, we should have. Uh, okay. Injuries healed. Removal tokens. 
endeavors. Three endeavors. Ah, because we had somebody die. Mm -hmm. Rougher. Okay. There you go. All right. Uh, now the next is going to be. Oh. Trigger timeline events. So, Dreamless Respite. Somebody wants us to rename Pachinko. Mm -hmm. The One-Armed Bandit. Kind of funny. <laughs> but I can't rename them. It's not the rules. Okay, so Dreamless Respite. Dreamless Respite. Nominate a survivor to gesture over the roar of snores. Hmm. I'm kind of thinking mainly crap, maybe craps. Okay. Craps. The survivors approach a mass of dreaming bodies held aloft by a motionless giant. The snoring forms a dense roar that drowns all other sound. The nominated survivor's voice is swallowed by the din. The settlement gains the dreamless language innovation. Okay. But they find it ineffective for communicating around the sphere of snores. Interesting. So you can just pass that deck to me, I'll handle it. So, dreamless language. Uh, all survivors gain encourage. If they standing, spend one survival to call out to a non deaf survivor, they stand when knocked down and add our language things to the deck. Okay. So we now have a deck. All right. And ready for a couple more names? Uh, yeah, we can do it. Uh, Ace. Okay. Uh, there was one other one I really liked that went by. Uh, oh, Roulette. Okay. Uh, Royal Flush. And, uh, let's go. Would you prefer king or queen? Pick one. And we'll fill that in in a moment. All right. They learn to communicate without sound. The settlement gains the silent dialect innovation. Oh, I just shuffled that into the innovation deck by accident. Okay, so silent dialect. What is this? Uh, the settlement develops a silent form of communication to cope with the ever-present din of snoring dreamers. All survivors gain the fist pump survival action. Interesting. Uh, fist pump. Once per round is standing, spend one survival to gesture to a non-blind survivor. survivor. They stand if knocked down. Oh. So it allows us to get people to stand up even if they're deaf. Yes. Interesting. All right. Um, the nominated survivor, so that's craps, gains two understanding. Two understanding. Which is not enough to have insight. Where does understanding go? It is in the oh, middle. Oh, there it is. Slightly oh, I forgot about those. Uh, it can be either male or female, your choice. We haven't uh, gendered anybody yet. Uh, thank you for joining Squirrel Monkey. Always appreciate it. All right. Search the innovation cards for dreamless language and silent di uh, dialect. Put them into play and record this on your arc re or settlement record sheet. Got that. The survivors agree they must hunt to live. Add the prologue monster, Crimson Crocodile, to your quarry list. Dreamless language is the innovation that sparks sure. the creation of the innovation deck. Build the innovation deck now. Okay, uh, Lensgo has picked Queen as our final name and specifically wants Queen to be a male. Okay. All right, build the innovation deck. The innovation deck represents the potential cultural and technological growth of your settlement. It will grow throughout the campaign as you gain new innovation cards. Find the six innovation cards with language consequences listed under their title. That is Ammonia, Drums, Hovel, Inner, paint, inner Lantern, Paint, and Symposium. Yep. 
Shuffle these six cards to form your Settlements Innovation deck. Place it face down in the designated space on the Settlement board. I already did that. The Settlement gathers around the Giant Guardian. Exhausted, the nominated survivor nestles in the overflowing robes of the encumbered creature. It remains still, enthusiastically motioning for the others to join. The survivor names their settlement's guardian the Dream Keeper. <laughs> Search the settlement location cards for the Keeper of Dreams and place it face up in your play area. The Keeper of Dreams is the source of all innovations and further locations that the settlement will develop. <laughs> okay, so... Stunning artwork once again, and now you get to see the paint of the green screen. <laughs> so we can build a bonesmith, a organ grinder, or a skinnery, no cost, just endeavors. If we get ammonia, we can spend an endeavor to groom the dream keeper once per lantern year. Nominate a survivor, they trim the dream keeper's toenails and wring the snoring dream keeper, dreamer's drool from its robes. Roll a 1d10. On a 1, suffer negative 1 luck. Otherwise, gain plus 1 loomy. Wow. Okay. Which we don't fully know what that is yet, but... Huddled in the Dream Keeper's robes, the sudden horror of existence is replaced by a spreading sense of calm. Under the droning thrum of snores and sighs, they drift off into dreamless sleep. Remove any disorders. I don't have any disorders. Alas, that would be no, nice to know. Yes. All right. The nominated survivor gains the grounded ability. At any time, you may set your insanity to zero, one, or two. Limit once per lantern year. Set insanity to zero, zero, one, or two. Okay. All right. First, that is the completion of Dreamless Respite. Okay. First meal. Woo! Nominate a survivor to raise a drink. Would you like to have... Uh, one of our two characters are bringing a new one. Um, I feel like bringing a new one. Really? Yeah, they're raising a drink to the people who came back. But I'm open. I'm flexible. Yeah. Would you like to do uh, Pachinko, maybe? Yeah, I'll do Pachinko. Okay. The settlement gathers for their first meal. The nominated survivor raises their hands to mark the settlement's unity with a sanguine sip. Communal consumption benefits the ARC Survivor's collective cognition. Build the Cognitive Collection Rewards deck, ordering the numbered cards with the lowest value on top. If duplicate numbers appear, use only one of each value. Include only CC Monster Reward cards for monsters in your campaign. Collective Cognition flourishes based on the variety and challenge of defeated monsters. When a monster is defeated, update the Settlement Victory section on the Arc Settlement Record Sheet to determine changes to Collective Cognition. The survivors digest their feast. Gain one Collective Cognition. Record this on the Arc Settlement Record Sheet. Collective Cognition imparts its first reward. Gain the CC reward card marked with one on the back. So we just get number one. Well, have we built the deck? The deck just has all the cards. Are we supposed to be... Uh, if duplicate numbers appear, use only one of each value. Only use cognitive, cognitive, uh, uh, co collective cognition monster rewards for monsters in your campaign. Okay, so how do I tell the monsters in the campaign? Well, we're going to have Crimson Crocodile, Smog Singers, Phoenix, and the King. No, but the... I don't know, ma'am. Oh, there's generic ones, and then there's ones that appear to be tied. So do we have the white lion? No. Okay, so I'll remove the white lion. Okay, I'm seeing. Um, so a lot of these appear more generic. Like, this doesn't appear tied to anything. Okay. Uh, but this is the king, so we'd keep him in the deck. Yes. Okay, just making sure... 
Um, and then the Phoenix is in this campaign, correct? Uh, yes. Smog Singers. There's another White Lion one. Uh, yeah. Quarry Monster Rewards have a collection of cognition oh, wait. number no, that corresponding isn't the to their node. So 6, 16, 26, and 36. I'm supposed to remove those? No, 6, 16, 26, and 36 are the only ones that are going to have duplicates, according to this. That will be the only ones that have things that we can't get, that only have the quarry for the monsters in our, do in our thing. So, like, yeah. Um... 6, 16, 26, and 36. Okay. Are the monster ones. Okay. So I got rid of the screaming antelope. Yep. We, we don't have that. And I got rid of the white lion. Okay. Okay. So the rest are here. Okay. And there's no dupes left. Okay, great. Yep, no dupes. Okay, so now we gain number one? Uh, yes. Okay. I will clean that up later in the how we store these. A little confusing. Um, okay, so facets of existence attain tier one philosophies. When you attain philosophies, they become available in your campaign. Return to first meal and build the starting philosophy deck. Okay, so the survivors examine the facets of existence through many lenses. Spirited debate erupts in the settlement as the survivors compare their viewpoints. Build the philosophy deck. Take two random tier one philosophy cards and the core philosophy card dreamism and set aside the starting philosophy card survivalism. So, hold on. Set aside survivalism. Yep. And then we need dreamism and then two random tier ones. Dreamism, survivalism, and how do I tell what are tier ones? There should be a number on the uh, card that says it's tier. It's like in the top left or top right, I think. Okay, uh, hand it to me. Uh, that's a star. Sorry, it's in. It's there. That one has a star on it because it's special. So like where the star is, the light, tiny little star, oh. that's where the tier is. No? Yes, there are Oh, numbers. I see now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the tiny star. Yeah. So I only want ones? Yes, ones. Okay. Okay. That's really tiny. Um, okay. And then I shuffle those with survivalism or dream. So you take the tier one philosophy cards, you shuffle them, and you take two of them. Okay. It's random. Two of them are... You, we only get two of them in our campaign. Okay, and then the other two go back into the... Yeah. Okay. Figuring this out is always fun. Yes. Though, honestly, like, I'm finding these directions relatively well written. Okay, pick one. All right. So... So, um, we now shuffle the cards except for survivalism and place survivalism, like shuffle those three, mm -hmm. and then place survivalism on the top of that deck. Okay, so this becomes our sur our philosophy deck. Yes. Okay. Okay, survivalism is on the top. Okay. The survivors share frantic reenactments of their tactics. Build the starting knowledge deck. Find Darkness 1, Despair 1, Fear 1, and Hunger 1. If any of these advance to a higher level during the Prologue Showdown, replace that card with the higher level achieved. Oh! Yes. That's interesting. So, I got Fear. Cause swore I set, and Hunger, I think. Yeah, I could swear I set Hunger aside. Hoping I didn't lose it. Okay, so I replaced Fear 1 with Fear 2 into the deck. And then Hunger 1 with Hunger 2. Did I put that back in here or something? Oh, keeping track of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hunger 2 is somewhere out on the table. Okay. All right. Oops. So we are supposed to shuffle these and place them into, and place the knowledge jack into play. 
Oh, here's Hunger too. Okay. So he should have four cards. Yep. I've got four. We shuffle them. Yep. And they become our initial knowledge deck. Yep. Okay, cool. The nominated survivor gains a random knowledge from the deck. Okay. So that I is guess, Pachinko. Yeah, I guess I get a second knowledge. Yep, looks like it. You get Darkness 1. Okay. Which gives you a torment. All right, so I. <laughs> Pachinko inherited the, uh, the <laughs> knowledge that uh, Blackjack left behind. Okay, and then I shuffle that back into the deck. Well, I, so I need to add a torment to the character. And five box. And everything else, yeah. Yeah. So I have one torment. Uh, and when I. Su oh, God, I have to suffer a brain trauma for despair. Yep. When you suffer brain damage, gain one. Well, at least she's got a lot of uh, insanity. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, hey, it's the one we didn't unlock the higher level for yet. Well, we didn't unlock either of mine. I know. I'm kind of joking because they yeah. both ended up on your one character. Yes. They focus and ponder the darkness. With the sudden acceleration of culture, the nominated survivor sees the path unfolding before them. Surviving the darkness is paramount. They gain hunt XP up to their first milestone. Ooh. Yeah, we really should have done this on a new character, but it's too late now. Mm -hmm. uh, and adopt a philosophy. Okay. When ARC survivors reach their first hunt XP milestone to a hunt XP, they adopt a philosophy by drawing the top card from the philosophy deck. Okay. The nominated survivor adopts survivalism. Oh, which I had accidentally shuffled in. Okay, cool. Don't so, shuffle things. Yes, expressing when you said not to. So you get survivalism. Yep, there's nothing else other than you adopt survivalism. Open the survivalism philosophy book and follow the directions on the starting page. Oh, shoot, those little booklets. Yes. I have to go get them. Okay. I will be back. I forgot to bring those up. Okay. Okay, so what I say to do with it? Uh, open it to the starting page. Okay. Starting page. Uh, the philosophy book describes one perspective survivors might adopt to make sense of their world. When a survivor adopts a philosophy, gain the tenant knowledge and neurosy of this philosophy. Create the rank plus milestones by bolding the corresponding hunt XP boxes on their ARC survivor record sheet. Advance to the first rank of the philosophy. We did. We only added the base philosophies. We didn't add any additional ones. Um, survivors cannot help but ponder the nature of their existence. All survivors must ponder if they are eligible to become eligible or become eligible during the developed step of the settlement phase. This increases the philosophy rank by one. Survivors can only advance once per lantern year. So philosophy name, uh, neuroses and tenant, the defining values of this philosophy, draw the tenant card and record its rules on the ARC survivor record sheet. Add the tenant knowledge card to the settlement's knowledge deck if it is not already there and record it on the settlement record sheet. This represents the path of the survivor's worldview follows, uh, shows hunt XP milestones when the survivor must ponder and to increase increases increasing their philosophy rank. The neuroses is a compulsive behavior of this philosophy record its rules on the arc survivor sheet. So you've got a lot of extra hunt XP marks. Your neurosi is selfish. So I need to pull that out of knowledge I believe it said. 
Uh, I think maybe. There are no ends. Oh, uh, uh, no, no. It's selfish. Inch. Selfish. It's selfish. Oh, My neurosis selfish. is selfish. Thank you. Okay, so I don't think that's what we're getting. We're getting tenacity. Yeah, tenacity. Oh, the selfish is probably a disorder. Okay, so you get tenacity. Um, tenacity is a knowledge. Yep. And it is uh, when you depart, gain a survival token. You may spend a survival token at any time to gain plus one survival. Um, and each t and you have to spend survival tokens twice to advance. Okay. understand why these are three and it's two okay. okay and that goes into our deck of knowledge <sighs> oh it's my favorite I'm not saying so where is the neuros maybe it's further in here oh selfish it says here oh um when you encourage another survivor, roll a d10. On a 6+, plus, you, you fail. Okay. But you keep your survival. And then you cannot encourage again this round. And if it's, if it's possible to use meat shield, you must. So if you ever get meat shield, you must use it if you have it. And then you're technically rank one? Yes. A uh, little warning here. If you reach 12 hunt XP and have never departed the settlement, you make a life-changing leap of logic. Proceed to the divergent rank of this book. Are you kidding me? Wow. That is interesting. Okay, survivalism one. Uh, as, of course, gorgeous art as always. And very close to not being safe, but just safe enough to put on screen. Uh, you are alone. All that matters is your survival. Adapt to survive. Gain one Lumi and roll a d10. One Lumi and roll a d10. Ooh, 10. Uh, CC5, uh, wait, your survival is in your hands alone. You must make them strong. Gain strength training uh, knowledge. However, you exercise past the point of exhaustion, lose all your survival. And what's CC5? I don't get what that means. That's collective cognition. Oh, if we were at CC5, maybe? I guess so. So since we're not, we don't get that? I guess so. Okay, strength training one. Um, do. It's just a theory, so no benefits or negatives. Uh, when you wound a monster, gain a square. You need to gain six. So I now have two knowledges, or I already have two knowledges. So the question is, how does that work? I think I probably just eliminate one, but like... That would make more sense. Yeah, but I ought to double check. Yeah, I really should have taken a new survivor. Ah, yeah. But we learned. We'll know for next game. Yes, I can replace any but my tenant knowledge. 
Okay. I am tempted to replace despair. I would do it. So I am replacing despair. Yeah, so you couldn't replace, uh, what was it called? Tenacity. Yes. So you can only have two knowledges, right? Yeah. So you pretty much have no choice but to eliminate despair. No, we can have three knowledges. Oh, we Sorry. can? My bad. Yeah, so strength training is... I only see see two on the There's sheet. There's the one under philosophy. Oh, that counts as a knowledge? Tenant knowledge. You oh, can that's... never replace your tenant knowledge. Oh, that's why it's separated. Could you put the strength training on there? Yeah, or... you just, uh, when you wound a monster, gain a square, you need six. And there's no additional rules? Nope. So I think that CC5 is with your role if we were at CC5 you would have gotten the extra benefit. And we need five wounds. Six. Oh, six. Ah, circling, this is a pain in the ass. I think I'm just going to put a little mark after the thing, indicating. Oh, that makes sense. Goes. All right, so... Um, all right, so that is that. And our collective cognition is what right now? One. Oh, we are at one? Yes. Okay, so yeah, we don't get the other two benefits from this. So after recording, shuffle tenacity into the knowledge deck. Okay. And we suffer shuffle in the strength training as well because you got that. Yep. Okay. So Anything I else? All my survival, but I was at zero anyway. Um, we had encouragement at this point. Okay, so next page is two. So until you hit two on this. Yeah. Which is, I need to gain two hunt XP to rank up to two. Okay. And then ponder. All right. During future settlement phases, survivors who reach new hunt XP milestones will adopt philosophies and advance others during the developed step. That makes sense. All right. Next. Extinguished guidepost. Uh, should I be shuffling survivalism in, back into the philosophy deck? Um... I would assume so, because these uh, these seem to build like the other decks. Yeah. I'll do it for now. We can always remove it later. Yeah, because I think you can select a philosophy. Um, no, I mean, philosophy deck. It looks like that's our thing we get instead of a weapon mastery. When we no, hit that. we can get weapon mastery, but we can't get, uh, we can't, yeah, we do get it instead of weapon mastery as a thing. Okay. And did you get a fighting art, I think we said at some point? No, I haven't gotten a fighting art. If okay. you get a fighting art, then things get complicated. It's a little complicated. I'm not sure. Yes, it stays in the deck. Oh, strength training wasn't a fighting art. It's a knowledge. Okay. Yeah, it's a t yeah, it's a knowledge. Okay, stays so in the deck. Done. All right, extinguished guidepost. Just outside the settlement, they gather to form a deadly pact. A death pact is formed. They will return with a kill, or not at all. Gain the death pact innovation. Okay, that is here. Um, when the survivors perish on the hunt or are defeated in the showdown. We have an event. So we're going to have to do that after we finish this part, right? Uh, no. This is, uh, that is um, if they perish during the hunt or the showdown, like when the survivors. This is the scout thing. Oh, so okay. So we don't have logistics of death yet. Okay. All right. So, and we gain the outskirts settlement location. Okay. Great art as always. I really like the art on the locations a lot. Um, when a survivor dies, their gear does not return to settlement storage. Scout. You may nominate a survivor to be the scout and join the hunting survivors when they depart. The scout is equipped with the dreaded pack and must use the scout gear grid, which is just a two by two. 
The scout is still a survivor and gains departing bonuses alongside the hunting survivors. Only a scout can use gear with the scout keyword. Uh, That's we... interesting. So this one says when a survivor dies. Mm -hmm. That's where okay. I was thinking. Yeah. That. Okay. Yeah, because some of it was a little bit confusing. But okay. Got it. Hollow stone gathering for an endeavor. Once per settlement phase, a survivor may carefully search the outskirts, gain a hollow stone strange resource. All right. Replace a random basic hunt event card with the scout basic hunt event card. Oh, I already did that. Okay. An ill-omened stench spreads through the settlement. Following the smell, the survivors reach an extinguished guidepost. The foul wind moans through its darkened lamp. On the ground, the survivors find a waxy gray object. Its eye-watering smell prevents them from seeing it clearly. Gagging and weeping, they roll it in layers of cloth until its smell is merely repulsive. The survivors contrive a use for the dreaded pack. Nominate a survivor to accompany the hunting survivors. The dreaded burden is lifted onto their shoulders. They are the scout this lantern year. They feel a grim responsibility. Okay, I think we do a new character. Yeah. What sounds like a scout name to you of all the ones we got? Snake Eyes? Sure! Snake Eyes is our scout this lantern year. All right. So we need to drop a sheet for him. Yes. What do we want to make snake eyes, male or female? Um, what do we have right now? Two females, two males. Um, let's make him a male. All right. I love how our survivors are all um, uh, basically Schrodinger boxes. Yes. We don't know what they are until we check. All right, so now the Grim Responsibility gain the Scout Gear Grid. Scouts must use it instead of normal grid. Then roll 1d10. 10. I'm rocking it this time around. The Scout feels a new resolve and stands up proud. They are the first to take up the mantle for the new settlement. For the settlement, the Scout gains plus one strength. Oh, nice. But they have negative two movement. So they only have three movement. Yep. Well, actually, it probably doesn't affect their base. That's on the scout gear grid, right? Yes. Okay. So it's on their... Oh, so only when they're a scout. Oh, we can change who's the scout. Yeah, I think so. That makes sense. Uh... The tenant does count towards uh, the limit of three. It's a permanent one. Yeah, but you, um, but you cannot replace it. Yeah, I'm stuck with it. Not that I have a problem with that. Okay, so the scout gains plus one strength. Though unfortunately, they ain't gonna have any insanity. All right, so that is the last uh, story event from the book. Okay, um, so we're at time for an ad. So I'm going to. Uh, kick the ad just about two minutes early okay. and pause our recording. Okay. And we're back. So, where are we heading into uh, main uh, thing now? Well, we finished all of the events on the timeline, so now we're going to update the death count. Okay. Which is going to trigger another event. <laughs> of course it will. Okay, so we now update the death count. And that's going to give us an innovation, right? Uh, it's going to give us something. Death counts. Yeah, the principal yeah. death. Is there a principal death in here, or? No, it's in the main book. There wasn't a new one. Okay, because there's there's definitely some new principles like intimacy. They're supposed to use the one from here. Yeah, I didn't see one for uh, this. But easy way, just check the table of contents. The table of contents? Yeah, it has all the events listed. Nope. Okay, then let's just do the main one. Uh, just organize your collection. It specifically only called out intimacy when I read it. Uh, 
Yeah, there's a couple of replacement things. So yeah, we're, yes. Okay, so. Principal death. <laughs> Principal death. Somebody has got to have written that in some dumb, uh, like, young adult book. No, never. All right. The group must decide to do with what to do with their first survivor corpse. Choose one. The first harvest. The, the settlement decides to harvest the body for resources. Or the first grave. The settlement decides to build a small monument to mark their loss. It's always hard. So if we uh, harvest them for resource, we cannibalize and we get survival limit increase. Mm -hmm which is very nice. And whenever a survivor dies, we draw a basic resource. Mm -hmm. um, the graves, we all new survivors gain an understanding. Uh, and when a survivor dies during the hunter showdown, gain two endeavors. When a survivor dies during the settlement phase, gain one endeavor. I generally prefer cannibalize. Yeah. But... I'm open. What are your thoughts? Um. Oh, move the paper off the green screen. Oh, sorry about that. Ah. All right, so. Uh, and we're getting votes for cannibalize. I'm good with cannibalize, honestly. Okay, let's do cannibalize then. All right. Which gives us a new survival limit. So the settlement decides to harvest the body for resources. The settlement gains the death principle cannibalize. Find and place the card on the settlement board and note it on the settlement record sheet. And I've updated our survival limit on the screen. Do we get uh, the resource right away? <laughs> I think so. Uh, no. Oh. After adding the card to the settlement, roll 1d10. Okay. Eight. Nominate a survivor. The survivor fanatically tears the corpse open and deeply drinks its blood. They decide for every new creature they eat, they will become stronger. The survivor gains one permanent speed. Ooh. So I feel like that should be one of our three mains, or possibly Snake Eyes. Well, Snake Eyes is going to be the scout. Yes. Um... Well, Snake Eyes is going to be the scout this time. This wouldn't count as a consumption, would it? No, it does not. Um, definitely not craps. Because he is limited to using weapons with one strength. Yes, so he's already going to be using probably more speed weapons anyway. Yeah. And anyways, he may not be a long-term fighter for us. I mean, Pachinko wants to go out. Okay, then let's do Pachinko. Okay. That seems good. Though we're getting a bunch of stuff on Pachinko. Yeah, but you usually want one good survivor for the first couple fights. Yeah. And then hopefully they don't die. Okay. So, Pachinko gains one permanent speed. Oh, a uh, question for our viewers, because somebody may know the answer to this. Uh, we were wondering if uh, we get the cloth and founding stone from the character who died during the prologue, since there wasn't the scout option before, and technically the death pack didn't come in until after. We think we get to bring it back with us, but we're not certain. Okay, so what's up next? All right. So we are now done with story events. We check milestone story events, which is what we just did. And now we develop. Okay, so now we can start spending stuff. Yes, so our three endeavors probably are going to the three, um, like, building the three base locations. Possibly. Uh, note, we do have another option. Mm -hmm. With the death pack, 
we can special innovate pictograph for a hide and an organ. Um, I, I don't remember what pictograph does. Anyways, it's the new pictograph mm -hmm. for extra fun. Um, new pictograph. Uh, the first time a level 3 quarry monster is defeated by survivors accompanied by a scout. Gain the scout discovery for that monster. And then we would add pictograph consequences to the innovation deck, mm -hmm. which that decreases our chance of getting sympo symposium. Yes. So I don't think that's a good call. But that would mean that we would immediately gain the scout discovery for Crimson Crocodile on the next hunt. No. Level 3 plus quarry is defeated by survivors oh. accompanied by a scout. Okay, never mind. Sorry, my bad. Yep. And the pictograph consequences, let's see, what would we unlock? Not seeing a whole lot yet. We're not seeing any yet. Do, 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 do. Those are principles. Uh, Memento Mori is one that we could then do. So it would only add Memento Mori okay. uh, to the deck. Which isn't that bad. No. But I'm not sure we want to do that. That would yeah. take one of our endeavors. Uh, we definitely want the Bone Smith, given all the bone we have. Somebody on our stream also pointed that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we only have, the only hide we have is any, so we probably don't need the Skinnery. Um... Yeah, the scout rule wasn't in play. Okay, so we at least get to keep the founding stone and yep. the cloth. Yep, which is good. Um, okay, so we probably want to make the, the bonesmith definite. That feels like the obvious. All right, I take an endeavor off and we craft the bonesmith. Okay, so we now have bonesmith. Um, Skinnery, we... We could actually make something with it, so that might be useful. Everything's a one hide. So that does, I mean, that does bring some benefit. Mm -hmm. um, what's the other thing? The organ grinder. I seem to remember it's something we always wanted the organ grinder for. Monster grease? Monster grease is definitely useful. Yep. Um, so... Let's look at the Crimson Crockery, since we probably want to try to make stuff off of this first, is my guess. Okay. So, do we have Thin, Pale Flesh? Nope. Um, we have the Crimson Crockery, though. Yes, we do. I'm looking at what we can craft. We don't have a Crimson Bone. No, we have a Crimson so if you want to pull out the Crimson Gear, or I have it. Yes. Okay. I think I got all of them. Nope, there is a lot. Holy crap. Um, okay, so we can make a Crimson Helm. There's an awful lot of bullet guitars. Figures the helm is really far down in the list. There we go. So we can make a crimson helm. It has mind lock one. It has two armor on helmet, mind lock one. When you spend an action, uh, you now have exactly one mind lock token. When you suffer brain damage, ignore it and lose a mind lock token. Wow. So that's pretty good armor. Um, we got flat vein, blood stool. Pseudo penis and blood diamond here. Can we do anything with those? Oh, and the uh, groom nails. We can also make a. Oh, we can make a crockbone hammer. So 
So we're going to have to learn a lot of these weapons again, or new ones. Mm -hmm. The Crockbone Hammer is a 272. Clobber 4. Gain 4 strength when attempting to wound a super dense hit location. Wow. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a plus 1 strength over the, uh, the Founding Stone. Good point. Um, we can, do we have scrap? No. Yeah, alas, scrap is pretty rare. The question can't do scrap, I believe. No. Um, so can't do that. We don't have baned glass, so we can't try the blood glass cleaver, even though we have one of the other things it needs. We could make the crimson Oh yeah, Crimson Pearls, and that would be the last of that. Last thing we can make even from this. Yikes. Yeah, we just didn't get uh, a great mixture. Yeah. But that weapon isn't bad. Yeah. I need to find the Crimson Pearls. Give me a second. There we go. It is a jewelry item. Is that showing up? There we go. Um, ah! What's wrong? On arrival, gain three bleeding tokens. Your fist and tooth attacks gain plus one strength for each of your bleeding tokens. Wow, that's a high risk reward thing. Holy shit. I will note. That is the only thing we can make with a blood stool. Yeah. I mean, we could always make it if we wanted to. But that would take the bone, which means we can't make the hammer. Oh, the hammer requires the bone, too? Yeah, the crimson bone. So we only have one crimson bone right now. Okay, yeah, then I think we need the hammer. <laughs> Though that is basically a weapon. Yeah. But, wow. Well, yeah, that's true. It is basically a weapon. Yeah, <laughs> dang, those pearls are risky. That is the understatement of the century. But yeah, good point. It's very strong, though, for early game. Three strength. Holy shit. I mean... But that makes it a 283. Whereas the croc hammer is a 272. I think the croc hammer is just a fundamentally better option. Yeah. What are with the affinity hookups again? I forget like what those do for us. Uh, you need them in order to qualify for certain things. So, for example, the lucky charm has needs two blue affinities in order to get the plus one luck from it. That's right. Okay. So one thing is, is that we forgot to name our settlement. Oh, we did. Yeah. So we need a settlement name. Any recommendations? We'd love recommendations on naming the settlement. Okay, so we're not doing the pearls, it looks like. Yeah, she's up. Um, we could do the helmet, but I think we'd rather have the hammer as well. Mm -hmm. So effectively, we've got two survival limit increases between the language and the cannibalism. Oh, so we're at three? Yes. Oh, nice. Uh, and all of the... Uh, returning survivors would have gained one survival at when that happened. Okay. So we should increase uh, all, all three of them by one. Yeah, except there, I think somebody lost all survival in one of the events. Oh, those are some interesting names. Uh, we can't have both because we only have uh, one crimson bone, and every all three of the things need a crimson bone. <laughs> it's good as long as you don't go up against anything that causes bleed. Yeah, pretty much. So. I kind of like ties. Casino Royale. Yeah. That just, that fits. 
Bellions was good too, high hopes, but I like Casino Royale. That just that that feels that feels spot on for this. Yeah, I'm good with Casino Royale. Okay. Um I cannot find it. The one that said that we uh there was one part something that said that we lost all survival. Okay, well we can check later. Okay. We're not doing another hunt today, so we have time. Okay, so I spent uh, one crimson bone and one regular bone to craft the croc bone hammer. Okay. So we do have a croc bone hammer. Okay. Um, we also have a bone smith, which we can use three bone and a hide to craft the weapon crafter, but I don't think we can do anything with them right now. So that feels... Well, the, oh, the weapon crafter? Yeah. I don't think we have mats for that. Uh, complicated. It does allow scrap smelting. Also whistling mace. Two bone, one organ. Mm-hmm. And the counterweighted axe. Two bone, a hide, and an organ. That's... Oh, but we'll never be able to get the Zambato. Oh, right, because uh, no great cat bone. Uh, oh. I'm crying. I'm so sad. No, it kind of sucks. Yeah. What is the skull used for? Skull helm. Uh, do we just want to make a skull helm? Possibly. Okay. That would be the bonesmith. I do remember the skull helm being quite good. Yes. And given how hard it is to get the skull... Okay, skull helm. Um, when you suffer a severe head injury, the skull helm is destroyed. Archive this card. It's three armor. Yeah. So, think we want a skull helm? I mean, it's quite nice, but, like, I mean, yeah, I think that's the primary use for it. Yeah. Skull helm it is. Whoo. People so, are recommending ranged weapons could be good. What is the... The skull helm is on the weapon crafter? No, no. That was on Bonesmith. The Bonesmith. Okay. Yeah. So that leaves us with um, the blood stool. Lots of stuff. I feel like even though we got... Unless there's something specifically with uh, that we want to make out of the crimson crockery with one of those four special things, we may want to use them for their base maps to make more stuff right now. Yeah. Or consume them. Um, probably not the Blood Diamond here. What would that even be used for? It's not on there. It's not? No. It is a special map labeled Diamond. Yeah. So. I feel like we should hold on to that. Yes, I okay. agree. So we are going to hold on to the Blood Diamond here. Um, oh, it's a, yeah, it's a strange resource. We definitely want to hold on to that. You reported that? It's not that? like we can use diamonds anyway. Yes. yes. I have reported it. Okay. So. A ranged guy for sure. Yeah. Probably want the, or yeah, let's make the organ grinder. Okay, so that's our second endeavor. Yep. Monster grease costs an additional organ, or costs an organ. Technically, we have two organs. I'm not counting the love juice, by the way. No, you shouldn't. Uh, we have three organs, two bone, and an any left. Um, what can we make with all this special shit? The flat vein seems rare, mm -hmm. and we need it for a blood glass cleaver, so I think we want to hold on to the flat vein. Okay. Um, grounded nails. Well. Groomed nails. Groomed nails. Let's actually make sure we would want a blood glass cleaver. That seems sane.
fingering darts. That's a Qatar cleaver. Um, honed five. I don't remember what honed is. It's a new ability. Honed weapons gain plus X strength until they strike something hard, ruining their edge. Unless something explicitly preserves or restores the edge of a honed weapon, it loses its additional strength until it is restored at the settlement. Okay, so... so effectively, it has five strength until you hit a super dense or parry hit location, at which point you lose it. Then it just becomes a 360. Yes. That feels like a good weapon. It is guardless, oh, yeah. which means you can't dodge or ignore hits. Mm -hmm. But I think we want to save that map for that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that was, we will save for the Blood Glass Cleaver. Um, seeing if at Groom Nails we can do a Blood Compass Lantern. Um, I'm not seeing anything oh, else. Oh, that required a skull. Huh. Oh. But it also requires scrap, which yeah. we're not but, getting immediately. But it may mean that we want to reverse that and save the skull. Based on how what this is. Well, I think that's the weapon crafter. So we have to get the weapon crafter, and that allows us to farm scrap. Oh right, uh, blood compass lantern. What would that even be? Uh, before making a wound attempt, you may gain one bleeding token to discard all hit locations from your attack and draw that many to replace them. Limit once per round. That's kind of nice, but I wouldn't consider it critical. Yeah. I'd be willing to spend the groom nails. Mm-hmm. If we uh, find something we want the bone on right now. Uh, I don't th see anything using the pseudo penis. Mm -hmm. uh, and the blood stool, we may want to make the beats later. So I think that may be worth saving. I don't yeah. know. I think it's worth saving. How many consumptions do I have to do on the one character? Three. I don't think I want to eat the stools. No. That could be useful. I may eat the pseudo penis. What does it have? Uh, gain three survival and the invigorator fighting art. So I uh, note that you will not necessarily gain that fighting art. Uh, arc survivors do not gain fighting arts. Oh. When they gain fight, when they would gain a fighting art, they instead trigger a story event in the book. Oh, and we it don't... apparently puts significant stress on them. Okay, so, but it is something meant to be consumed here. Mm -hmm. Or no, it says when you gain a fighting art instead. Oh. Yeah. I'm tempted just to find out what it does. Because I have to consume three things. Mm -hmm. What do you think? The question is, do we want to do it now? That's a fair point. I, and is there... I mean, so our option, other option is to basically, like, you know, do something like... So, we have the organ grinder. Oh, yeah. So... We could make, um... What's it called? Monster Grease or Fecal Self. Yes. Which I forgot. I know the one is Extra Evasion, I believe. Mm. Yeah, I think Monster Grease may be Evasion. Yeah. Right. We'll have to double check. Yeah, gain plus one Evasion, and if you get three of them, you get an additional Evasion. And then Fecal Self... What color is that again? Green. Oh. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Fecal solve. When you depart, gain a survival. Uh, action. You are not a threat until you attack. If you have the priority target token, remove it. Yeah. It also has a rare blue hookup. Yeah. So, it's not critical, though. Like, I mean, I think I'd probably be more for Monster Grease, because Evasion, yo. 
Everybody loves evasion. Yeah, I think I can avoid eating right now. Let's spend the pseudo penis to make a monster grease. Okay. Getting one of those is never a bad idea. Yeah, the question is, do we want the skinnery right now? We can use the any to make something mm -hmm. uh, out of the skinnery if we wanted a piece of armor. We could make any of the base armors or a bandage. Yeah. Um, alternatively, we can make stone noses, it looks like, for an endeavor. Mm -hmm. uh, what are those? Which is new. But it's on the organ grinder, so it should be in there. Um... On arrival, gain one survival and one insanity. Arrival oh, at the start of showdown. That's kind of useful. Yeah. Like, because that basically means that uh, our departing survivors will, our new survivors will gain insanity before facing the Crimson Crocodile, so they won't be terrified. That's a good point. We can also spend the thing to augury and try to intimacy. Why would we do that when we have love juice? Good point. Very, very good point. So I'm actually pro getting stone noses. Okay. Given the crimson crocodile, I think yeah, I'd usually go for the skinnery, but that extra survival makes a big deal, and so does this. Uh, yeah, exactly what Gibbons just said. Uh, makes it as a buffer for against terrified. Yeah, because we have characters that don't start with a survival or with an insanity, so we can put that on that character to get their insanity the one. Yeah. Okay, so, um... Like, what's his name that we just made? Yeah, Snake Eyes. All right, so we also want to consider weapons. Yeah, and now we have two bone that we're willing to spend and uh, any. Yeah. To possibly make weapons. And we have one founding stone and we have the uh, croc, croc bone hammer. So we ideally we would have another weapon. I mean, I'm not sure about the scout, honestly. Yeah, we can't make the weapon smith, so we're yeah, not even... Yeah, so we're using the bone smith. Yeah. And as somebody said, there's the benefit of the bone darts, but the bone darts are fragile or frail, I think. And he did have hard locations. Yes, super dense locations, which means without having the skinnery and the rawhide headband, that's a little bit dangerous. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and we're not going to be able to make the rawhide headband. Yeah. Which... Kind of sucks, but such is life. Um, but I think maybe actually a fair number of these may actually be uh, frail. Yes. Uh, so we could make a bone club or a bone axe. Yes. Which I think would be our ideals is one of the harder weapons. So let's see what those look like. So the bone axe is up on the screen. So it is frail. The bone darts is also frail. Yeah. Um, we cannot make the sickle, which eventually we want those for the event. We can make a dagger. Which is not frail. Has higher speed. We can make a blade. Which is frail. We can make the club. Not frail, but does have cumbersome, so it has really high strength. What does cumbersome do again? You must spend movement as an additional cost to activate this weapon. Oh. So that is very, very hard. Yeah, but, oh, wow. That's almost, that is a guaranteed hit. Yeah. If we hit, it's a guaranteed damage on him. Yeah. Well, no, because I think his toughness might go up. Yeah, toughness is probably going to be like 6, I'm guessing. Or 8, yeah. Uh, no, it's 7. So that's not bad. Yeah, so basically that's a guaranteed hit because you fail on a 1 anyway. So 1 plus 5 would be 6, so 2 plus is 7, which means you'd hit on 100% of the rolls that you can hit. I thought you said his toughness is 7. Yes, his toughness is seven. If you roll one, it's oh, automatically yeah. a failure anyway. So good points. It's essentially a guaranteed hit, as guaranteed as it gets. Yeah, but we do have to be in contact at the start of the turn. Yeah, which is very rough. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to work well on him. Mm -hmm. um, the axe is not frail. Oh no, it is. Yeah, the dagger's the only not frail one, aside from the club. 
but it's got high um, speed. Speed. Um, That's its only benefit, aside from the fact that it does get you survival. If you yeah. get perfect hits, but it's also got some risk. I would lean in the direction of either we do two bone daggers. Wait, scouts can't use, can only use scout gear. Yeah, so we also need to look at the outskirts. Yeah. Is there anything we want to gear our scout with? Yeah, that's a good call. Um, we can't. It, well, if we made a fecal solve and had a perfect organ. We don't have perfect organs. Yep. So we're not making anything. Uh, we can gain a hollow stone strange resource for an endeavor. Okay. Once per need... settlement. Ooh. We need the stone nose, man. We really do. Okay, I'll give you that. But we need hollow. We need three hollow stones to make the cloak. Mm -hmm. Wow. Which is pretty important. Let's see. What is it? It's a strange resource. Oh, yeah. Like, man, that's rough. Yeah, because that gets me thinking. Let's see what the cloak is. Stone face cloak. Um, three head and body armor. Or two head and body armor. At the start of your act, if you are not on terrain, you may hide. Replace yourself with the hidden face terrain tile. Place the scout miniature on the terrain card. So that's really powerful, but it's going to take nine lantern years to earn it. Nine? Yes. Or no, because nine. no, once per settlement, we can get. Oh, sorry, three lantern years. Okay, not yeah, as bad. Three lantern years. Doing bad math. I saw three hollow stones needed. I doubled it or tripled it. I don't know why I multiplied it. Yeah. Okay, so we're not doing anything out of the outskirts right now. Mm-hmm. So the question is, we have two weapons. We have a founding stone, and we have the crock bone hammer. Do we... I'm almost thinking if we're going to go frail, we should get a dart. Yeah. We have a two out of whatever the fuck is in this deck chance of hitting... A super like dense. Super dense, yeah. That's pretty low chance. The coagulated locations are just coagulated. So if we're attacking a coagulated location, we're probably good, too. And it's a only has a one. There's only one coagulated that has a super... No, it has a, there's a first strike, but... So essentially, like, if we're attacking a coagulated location, we 100% know that if we only draw the coagulated location, which it only has a speed of one, mm -hmm. that we will always get a non-super dense location. And then the regular hit locations, we can keep track, and if we've hit a super dense, we're safer. Yeah, because there's two in here. Okay. I think usually the hit location deck is something like 20 cards. Yeah, so I think our, our viewers have it. A dagger and a dart. Can we... Wait. We can't put a... We can't put a weapon on the scout, right? The, the scout gear grid says only scout stuff, right? I think so. Let me double check. Um, cursed gear cannot depart as a scout. Scout gear grid is, is the only one that... Oh, no. You can only... It's the only one that you can put scout gear in. You can put any gear in. Okay. So we can give him a weapon. Okay. So yeah, I'm thinking the dagger and the bone darts is sounding good, because then that also saves our question, question, question for future. Okay. Okay. Bone dagger and bone darts. And the last question, do we intimacy? Um, it gets us up the new intimacy event, correct? Yes. So I'm feeling like that's not a bad idea. I mean, we're going to risk it at any point. We do not have anything 
right now that is guaranteed, like, we're going to introduce the next quarry after the next thing, but, like, I wouldn't say that that's likely to get us a benefit. Yeah. Um... I don't know. I think we can wait on the intimacy because I know there's something. Sometimes we lose materials out of our settlement. There's that too. From intimacy? Uh, no, from just period. Like sometimes settlement events will lose us resources and storage. Oh yeah, that's a fair point. So the question is, you know. Want to just do it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we don't have a lot to pass down is my only thing. Yeah, but we're not going to be able to pass down a lot for a while. That's a fair point. All right, so... And it may give us a better scout or something. Yep. So, intimacy. And this is the new one, right? Yes. So, nominate two consenting survivors to be parents and roll on the ARC birth table below. Okay. Um, do we want to use good? We can... We cannot die for both like we cannot lose both parents we would must maybe lose one of them okay what can be handed down uh, da, 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 da. so what general we're going to want to do grand feast but that requires three cc per year like in a year that seems unlikely collective cognition we'd have to gain three collective cognition in a year wow and we can gain that um, knowledge from one of their parents. Okay. And draw random knowledge cards, uh, and we cannot get a prodigy. Then I'm of the opinion that we do one of two things. Mm -hmm. We make another monster grease, or we pass. Well, but we'll also get the principal new life. Oh, shit. I forgot the principal. Yeah, so we're going to unlock the principal, which is going to unlock some additional stuff. No, I forgot about the principal. Okay, yeah, the principal's kind of important. Yeah, so... Which we get to choose from Protect the Young, or what's the other one? Without Mercy. Uh, excuse me, Survival of the Fittest. Which means we can raise our survival limit, and all current and, all current and newborn survivors gain plus one strength and plus one evasion. Yeah. That yeah, that would be really helpful. And once per lifetime, a survivor may reroll a single roll result. They must keep this, which yeah. can save us. Protect the young. Um, we get to roll twice on the story event. Yeah, which is kind of nice, but... I know. think survival of the fittest is the way to go. Yeah. Okay, so since we could lose somebody, I'm kind of thinking we just do two, no two of our random characters. Uh, it's complicated. We cannot lose both parents. Okay, so do one new character and one that we might want to hand down a knowledge? Possibly. Now, the one problem is, is that uh, the other will gain a random disorder. In the worst case. In the worst case. Okay. Which we have a 20% chance of getting. That's not too bad. Uh, famous last words, but I know. Yes. Yeah, the earlier we can get the principal, the better. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So they will hand down the knowledge. So it would be nice to hand down the care, like, um, you know, uh, what's her face is knowledge. You have the sheet over there. Yes. I'm thinking that should be one of them if we go in. But they will, they could gain another disorder. That's fine. I'm willing okay. to take that risk. And then we have the other be a new character. So we okay. need a new male character. Yep. Let's have a, a queen. Okay. So drop a sheet for queen, just in case. Or do we need to? Uh, I don't think we need... Well, uh, mark them at, uh, Yeah, we don't need to draw a sheet unless something changes. Yes. Okay, do I roll one or two dice? Uh, one die. I'm due for a ten. Oh, fuck me. You rolled a one? Okay. 
The newborn dies shortly after birth. A random parent, now a broken husk, wanders into the... Oh, random parent. Fuck. Okay, so... Odd would be, uh... Oh, fuck me. I'm so... No, I mean, like, I we wouldn't have taken that risk if we'd known that. No, that's fair. So, in that case, I think... We would have done two newbies. Yeah. Okay, so pick another newbie to make female. Uh... Let's do uh, chance. Okay. okay. Odd is chance, even is queen. Queen! <laughs> so much for uh, the reference to uh, uh, that pirate anime. What the hell is that called? <laughs> Zombie Fisk is not happy. <laughs> All right, death count goes up. Oh, we get a resource. Yeah. <laughs> he made me help us make something. Sorry for not reading carefully. Ah, no problem. And does something happen to the other survivor? Ah, uh, yes. The other grieves the loss, gaining one Lumi and a random disorder. Okay. I'll let you shuffle that. One Piece, yes. That's it. That's one of the ones that uh, we've never watched that we want to. We've watched all of Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. Uh, probably about a quarter of Boruto, but we don't watch many of the super, super long anime. At least not until we're retired. Yeah, that's it. Though we did just finish uh, the second season of A Certain Scientific Railgun. That was fun. Pray. You may not spend survival unless you are insane. Well, part of it for me is I want to use One Piece manga to help teach myself Japanese. Yes. So what was that? Pray. Uh, you cannot gain survival unless you are insane. Okay. That's a thing. Or you may not spend survival unless you are insane. Okay. And then our basic resource. Oh, we got a hide. Nice. Do anything with hide right now. Yeah, so pull the survival of the fittest, by the way, because we didn't get it. Oh, we didn't? No, we didn't actually have a birth. Oh, shit. We don't... I thought we... didn't... We... It dies in childbirth. It dies shortly after birth. It doesn't count. Wow. Well, that's shitty. Yeah. That's the way it works, man. No, it kind of is. It's the nature of the game. I don't think there's anything we can do at the Oregon Grinder with Hyde. Nope. Uh, that sucked. Okay. I but it was going to happen. I think we are done with the belt. Yep. Oh. And I'm up to four ones. Congratulations. I'm doing great. All right, so we are not innovating. Uh, so we archive the rest of our resources. Oh, yeah, we'd have to have a bone, an organ, and a hide to innovate. Well, we also need an endeavor, so that's oh, a yes. real problem. So, yeah, but I think we did good getting weapons. Yeah. So our resources are a question, 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 and a monster hide. Yep. What is All right. That's just our collective cognition. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. I think that's it. I think that's it. I oh. think we it is finished with us for now. Okay. And I think the only thing we can hunt next time is another one of those bastards. Yes. We are going to have to hunt another crimson crocodile. <sighs> okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it was really awesome seeing so many returning and a bunch of new uh, subscribers as well, or followers. Also seen one of our longtime YouTube people come and join, and not only join, but dump a bunch of subs on people. Wow. So thank you, everybody, and we can't wait to do more. Have a good one.